Apple's completely redesigned iOS 26 is out right now. And for today's video, I wanna cut out all the fluff and show you my favorite tips, tricks, hidden features, and customization options with iOS 26. And I am not wasting any of your time. Let's jump right in. And let me tell you, after downloading this update, you are going to see a brand new visual refresh to almost everything with iOS 26. This is called Apple's new liquid glass design, and I love it. And if you really want to embrace liquid glass, you can try out Apple's new clear icon mode. To enable this, long press on the home screen, then tap edit in the top left corner. And on the bottom, you'll see the usual options for the default mode, dark mode, the tinted mode, but then there's also this new clear mode option. Tap on clear and all of your apps will now have this new liquid glass effect. And it's more than just a transparent icon. As you scroll through the app pages, you can even see the glass lensing and the light refracting between the app icons and your wallpaper. I find it works really well if you are someone that uses a custom photo wallpaper as you can appreciate your photos a lot more clearly with these clear apps. Speaking of which, I already know you're going to be asking, Greg, where can I get this wallpaper? Well, it's in the link in the description. It's on my store. So just watch the rest of the video first, but if you wanna know where to get it afterwards, there it is. Now, even though this clear effect is cool, if you're someone that uses a photos widget, you probably don't wanna see that photos widget in this colorless clear mode. However, you can easily change this to do this, long press on the photos widget, then hit edit widget, and then toggle always display in full color. And just like that, your photo widget is displayed in color while all of your apps still have that cool clear effect. As I said from the start, Liquid Glass is a redesign. It includes a lot of cool glass-like effects from the notification center window, control center, the buttons, the tab bar, and other areas of the user interface. However, I do get that this look isn't for everyone. And some users have even complained about legibility issues. And while I encourage you to give this redesign a shot before enabling this feature, if you can't stand it or you just can't use it, well, you can actually turn it off. To do this, go to settings, scroll down and tap on accessibility, tap on display, then tap on reduce transparency. This will improve contrast, reducing transparency and blurs to increase legibility. And as you can see, it changes iOS 26 pretty drastically, removing a lot of those really transparent glassy effects. Again, give it a shot before turning this on, but hey, if you need it, there it is. Speaking of other customization, let me show you some eye-popping lock screen customizations. First of all, long press on your lock screen, then tap customize on the bottom. There's a few new things here. First of all, you can now move your widget section to be on the top or bottom of the display. To do this, just drag the widgets up or down. You can also make the clock bigger. All you have to do is pull down on the bottom right of the clock and you can adjust how big the time looks. Personally, I like to make this as big as possible because it enables this really cool effect in a few areas. First of all, on certain wallpapers, the time can have this cool depth effect where the time kind of goes behind the subject and it can also dynamically adjust the size in areas like the photo shuffle wallpaper. The time will also stretch out in areas like notification center, which I think looks really cool and adds a lot of life and personality to the operating system. You can also spatialize the wallpaper on your lock screen to create a really cool 3D effect that looks like it's popping out of your phone screen and moves as you move your iPhone. You really have to see it in person. I don't think this video does it justice. To do this, just tap on this icon on your lock screen and iOS 26 will spatialize the photo. It works really well on clear subjects with distinct backgrounds. So things like family photos, pets, and buildings work really well. And if you really like how this looks, you can actually just enable this in the Photos app. To do this, go to your Photos app, find a photo, again, with a clear subject, and you'll see the spatial photo icon near the top right corner. Tap on this and you will create a spatial photo that has the same 3D effect as your lock screen. One last trick with the lock screen is that when you're now charging your iPhone, you can see the exact time you have remaining until your iPhone battery charges to 80%. And you can also find this in the battery section in the settings. Okay, what about battery life? We all want more battery life. If you've used iOS for a while, you know it has a low power mode, but when you use low power mode, it kind of just throttles everything. I, I wish my phone could be smarter about how it uses battery. Well, it can with iOS 26 with the new adaptive power mode, which smartly toggles settings throughout the day to extend your battery life. To enable this, go to settings, tap on battery, then tap on power mode, then tap on the adaptive power mode, and you'll gain some additional juice. You can even toggle adaptive power notifications 
to let you know when this new mode is kicking in. Now, customization goes much farther than ever before because you can now customize the background of your iMessage chats. To do this, go to iMessage and go to the chat you wanna customize. Then tap on the person's name or the group chat's name. Then tap on the background section. From here, you will see different customization options. For example, Apple has some cool built-in ones like this color wallpaper, which is dynamic and moves in the background. You can actually swipe between this one to change colors and you can even fully customize this by tapping on the bottom left or bottom right color option, letting you mix and match your colors to make your own distinct background. You can find other options like water, the Aurora backgrounds, which also have another few customization options, or you can set your own photos as the chat background and you can even generate one with AI. Don't generate one with AI. Have some taste, have some personality. Don't be a robot. Speaking of having personality, you might be learning another language or know someone that speaks another language. You might even be really successful and deal with international clients or maybe you have a pen pal. None of this applies to me, but the auto translation in iOS 26 is really cool and makes me want to learn another language. To enable this, tap on the chat name again, then in the default info section, scroll down until you find automatically translate. Then tap this and turn it on. You can choose from a few languages, but once you do, just go back to your iMessage chat, start typing your message, and you will see it automatically translate into the language you selected. It is very cool. If you live in Japan and you wanna teach me Japanese, comment down below. If you live in Korea or China, you know, I, I would like to learn that too. I do know a bit of German, du hast mich. Listing all those countries made me hungry. And if you're trying to decide between if you should get Korean or Japanese food for dinner tonight, well, you might want to create a poll in messages. Now to do this, you unfortunately do need friends or coworkers or some sort of group. Please don't join a cult. Unless it's the cult of Greg, then hit subscribe. But seriously, go to your group messages, tap on the plus button, then hit polls from the pop-up list. Then to edit the poll, just tap on each choice, type in what you want your choices to be. And if you keep typing, you'll be able to add more than three choices. Then hit send and you have your friends vote. And then completely ignore their suggestions because no matter what, I'm getting some soon to boo tonight. Now, one thing I hate dealing with is spam messages and scams. And thankfully in iOS 26, you can now filter spam and unknown senders so they don't show up in your main message area. To do this, tap the menu button in the top right of messages, then tap manage filtering. So by default, you can select filter spam, which messages will do its best to automatically hide notifications from likely spam sources and move messages to the unknown sender list. However, I like to take that one step further and also toggle on screen unknown senders, which will just send anyone not in your context to that extra screening area. You can also filter this to still allow notifications from these unknown senders if the notification is time sensitive and you can tap on this to add other filters like personal, transactions, or promotion notifications. Now to find these unknown senders once you enable this, just tap on the menu button in the top right of iMessage and here you can find the list of messages from unknown senders and spam messages so they don't clog up your main chat area. Let me show you one more trick in iMessage that has solved one of my biggest frustrations and that is the ability to select the text of the message you are copying. Now before in iMessage, if you wanted to copy a message, you would have to long press on the message and then copy the whole thing, even if you only wanted to copy a certain portion. So if you were just trying to copy like the password or just a specific set of details in a long message, well, you'd have to copy the whole entire message. It was really annoying, but now you can just select a portion of it. To do this, long press on the message and instead of tapping copy, tap select, and this will allow you to select the exact portion of the message you wanna copy, finally. Now, do you use your iPhone as an alarm clock? Do you hit the snooze button? Well, this next trick, it's for you, because you can now edit the duration of how long your snooze alarm lasts. To do this, go to the clock app, go to the alarm section, Tap on the alarm you want to edit and on the bottom, you can now change the default snooze duration from 15 minutes to one minute. So if you need to wake up to film the important iOS 26 video at 4 a.m. because it needs to go out today, you can set it to as low as one minute. So you wake up and, and don't snooze and fall asleep. That was not based on a real story. Okay, admittedly, while Apple has had some pretty bad AI features with iOS 18, iOS 26 actually adds some fun and helpful ones. 
My favorite fun one is the new auto mix feature in Apple Music, which is like having a full-time DJ on your phone. And to enable this, just play some music, tap on the bottom right menu, then tap this new icon in the top right. And now Apple Music will automatically mix and transition songs in your library and create some really cool and awesome transitions between your song. Like I've had a ton of fun using this and I would demo it for you and show you an example, but I do not want a copyright strike. Another cool AI feature is screenshot search. To do this, just take a screenshot. If you don't know how to do that, well, you just press the power button and the volume up button at the same time. Now you can see some new options with this screenshot and you could tap on the bottom right to do a Google search on whatever it is you screenshot it. And it will kind of just give like a full search of that photo or you can uh, tap the bottom left and you can ask ChatGPT questions about the screenshot. And you can even circle things to highlight them to search specific things in that screenshot. And the screenshot feature also has a hidden feature because if you screenshot something that contains a date, you'll see a new button pop up in the bottom middle. And if you tap on this, you can automatically add that date and event to your calendar. This next trick is for anyone who's taken a photo and found it to be really blurry afterwards. And all it might've been is that your lens was dirty and you needed to clean it. And iOS 26 can warn you of that. To enable this, go to settings, scroll down to camera, tap on camera, then scroll down and then turn on lens cleaning hints. And now you'll get a notification to clean your lens whenever it is dirty. So you no longer get bad pictures. That's good enough. But those are my iOS 26 tips and tricks for new users or really anyone. Considering it's such a big change, you likely learned something new. And if you did, please leave me a like, subscribe because I'm so close to 400,000, like definitely subscribe. And hey, iOS 26, it's brand new. Chances are your mom, your dad, your friends, your coworkers are going to need to learn these new features. So don't forget to share and send this video to them. And if you did, send this video to someone. I want you to know personally that whoever sent this to you, they are a great person. They got great taste, they're funny, they're good looking, they're smart, they're successful. If you're their parents, you should be proud. If you're their boss, you should give them a raise. And if this is the IRS, well, I can assure you, they have paid all of their taxes in full. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.